All right, class. First off, as always, good day. I'm glad you guys are here. Today, we are going to be looking um, at a little different section of the world um, than we have in the previous time. Now, again, we were going to continue on with the the Protestant, the Calvinism movement, stuff like that, but it was kind of like, no, we're not. that doesn't really apply for things later on. All the other things did, the Renaissance and you know, the plague, and so that all that has a cause and effect that later plays on. Um, however, um, the things I was planning to do with you guys later on, or uh, continue on with, it didn't have anything to deal with future lessons, so I kind of skipped that. However, what we're going to be talking about now is not only imperialism, but specifically aiming at the um, Atlantic slave trade that happened and the colonies that were set up to make countries, big countries, um, more powerful. Okay. So the objective today, we're going to analyze the importance of a country having silver and gold. Seems pretty obvious, but still we'll go over that. Then we're going to create an argument on whether the slave trade would have been as large if no one knew about the North America continent. All right. So here is your warm up picture. The first question asks you basically what's happening here. Um, so if you look at from the background, foreground, left to right, there's several things there. The second question asks you who, based off the picture, who is bringing the stuff to the table? Who's doing all the work? Okay. Um, should be pretty easy for you to answer. So go ahead, answer it, pause the video. Okay. Because we're moving on in three two, one. All right. So thing is, Spain and Portugal, they've already, quote unquote, discovered the new world. OK, they've set up colonies in uh, Mexico, in Panama, Peru, places like that, Colombia, uh, Brazil, Uruguay. Thing is, other countries realize, well, we can we should get in that area, too. So Britain, France, the Dutch, the Dutch. They even took over areas and set up colonies. All right. Now, these colonies, their primary job was to look for gold, silver, timber, um, fresh water, new foods, things like that. Because you have to remember, those countries, Spain, Portugal, Britain, France, the Dutch, Netherlands, Belgium, all these countries, people have been living there for thousands of years and they basically used up all the resources. You know, they're really low on um, trees, fresh water, you know, food, things like that. But now all of a sudden they have this other half of the world where they think it's plentiful. There's like nobody there. There's, you know, just there for the taking. That's what they do. Okay. Now, the mother countries, they know. They need people there to do the work, to gather the stuff, to dig for the gold and silver and get the crops and things like that. But they also know at the same point that if they send people and they don't give them anything, they just make them work, 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 work. Those people are going to get mad. They're going to stop working, things like that. So the mother country basically told them, what do you need? What do you want? Well, I, I, we want uh, new beds. No problem. We'll send you beds. What else do you want? Oh, I, I need horses. No problem. We'll send you horses. Oh, I want uh, newer guns. Sure, no problem. Send you guns. You just bring us the gold and silver. We'll give you what you need. And this is where you have to realize those people are getting what they want. So it makes them happy. But the country is getting more out of it. They're getting the gold, silver, bronze, copper, food, lumber, fresh water. They're making out like bandits. Okay. Now, here's the thing that you should remember. Keep this in the back of your head for forever and a day. Exports means things that are leaving the country. So think of exports like exit. It's leaving. It's leaving. Imports are things coming into a country. Right? So things are coming in. Imports is coming in. Okay. So hopefully you'll remember that. And keep that in the back of your head because there'll be times later on you might be hearing on the news, 
oh, um, this stuff was, this export is contaminated. Well, is that stuff coming in our country or is that stuff going out of our country? That's stuff going out of our country. It's, it was somehow contaminated and now it's going somewhere else. Okay, so you, it's, again, so again, because people will freak out. They hear stuff like that. Well, an export thing contaminated. Oh my God, it's going to attack our country. Oh God, we're going to, no, that's, it's leaving our country, you know, so, okay. So here's your first question. What would it take to get you to leave your home country to an unknown country and start a new life there? And you can never come back. You can never come back. So what is it going to take? What is the government going to have to give you to make you leave the United States to go to a country like Kazakhstan or Albania, you know, Lithuania, countries you probably never heard of? What would it cost them? What would it take? What would you tell them? I Well, I want this if I'm going over there. Let me know. Okay. So pause the video, write your responses because we're moving on in three, two, one. Now, the reason I asked you that question is because countries really needed people to go to these colonies, specifically companies. They need these companies because these companies, they know how to dig for gold and silver, things like that. They know how to make things. They know how to, um, to uh, harvest crops and things like that. So they basically gave them subsidies. Gave them extra money, supplies, whatever they needed. They needed a warehouse down there. Fine, we'll build you a warehouse. Uh, we need the newest tools. Fine, we'll get you some tools. We'll send you, we'll send it over there with you. You know, oh, I need an army to protect me. Sure, we'll send you a battalion of people to make sure nobody messes with you guys over there. Okay. While that's going on there, they realize, man, we need to fix up our roads. Because a lot of carriages would break down on the road. And how would you, just imagine this, near our school, if an armored truck had flat tires with the door open, how many people would try to rob that place? I mean, I'd be right there with you guys. I'd be knocking you guys to the side, taking that money. Because the thing is, that's an armored truck. They got money in there. So people, if they see that, they're going to take it. So just imagine a, a wagon full of gold and the it's busted. It's just sitting there. People are going to try to rob it. So what these countries did, they realized, okay, anything where the gold, silver, and all this stuff is being transported, we need to make it better. Roads, make them nice and smooth. Take out those divots, rocks, things like that. Bridges, make them stronger, bigger. Canals, again, make them bigger, deeper. Okay? Because they didn't want anything to stop the flow of items coming into their country that could bring them money. Okay. Now, some countries, they try to sell to these colonies. You know, try to sell them, hey, furniture, things like that, blankets. And typically, they would sell the prices a little bit lower. And like I asked the classes, you know, people in class, if there was a blanket that I was selling for $10 and someone else was selling the exact same blanket for $5, which one would you buy? You would buy the $5. Why? Because it's cheaper. Heck, you could buy two blankets for the price of mine. So uh, countries basically start putting tariffs, which are taxes, on the goods sold from other countries. So instead of the blanket calling costing $5, now with the tax, extra tax put on, it might cost $12, $13. So which one are you going to buy now? My $10 one or the $13 one? And you would more likely buy my $10 one because now that one's cheaper. Now, some people said, no, no, that's not fair because ultimately, who's the one paying the price? It's the consumer. Did I lower my price? Not at all. So that $5 you would have saved Without that tariff, now you have to spend it to buy my thing. And some people say that's wrong. Some other people say, no, it's good. Because that money is going to the company that is in our country. And that country is going to be making money. 
that company is going to make money. The worker is now going to have a job because now money is coming in and it's good for our country. But some people say no. It's bad because that makes the people have to pay more on things. So with that being said and both sides being explained, which which way do you fall? Do you think tariffs are a good thing or a bad thing? And why do you say it's it's a good or bad thing? What's the reasoning behind your um, thinking? Okay. So pause the video, write your response, but we're moving on in three, two, one. All right. So I don't know how to explain break this down to you guys if you don't know this already, but slavery is nothing new. Slavery has been done since the days of the Egyptians, the Macedonians, the Greeks, the Romans, guys, even to the beginning of man. Basically, when people have been able to conquer another people and they've taken them prisoners, they basically had them work for them for free. That's slavery. Okay. Um, again, it's been around for thousands and thousands, thousands of years. Now, like I told my classes, um, some people have been taught something about slavery back when they were younger and it's just been stuck in their head or they've been told by people and it, they just think now oh, that's the way it was. But this is the true historical facts, okay? Now, the demand for African slaves didn't start in the United States. Believe it or not, it started from the people in Southwest Asia, which we more or less like the Middle East area. Why did they want African slaves? Because they saw the Portuguese. The Portuguese had domestic servants, people who were Africans who were waiters and uh, cooks and things like that, maids. And so they basically said, oh my God, I want that. And I will pay for those uh, to get that. So people are like, okay, well, we'll most see what we can do. Okay, so that's how it started. Now, the demand for them jumped up immensely more when the Americas were discovered. Again, not North America, surprisingly. It's actually the, the, the islands. Islands like Cuba, the Dominican Republic, um, Costa Rica, Jamaica, Puerto Rico. Those islands are where the the demand for slaves really kicked up. And again, some people think, oh, it's about cotton, cotton, cotton. No, it's not about cotton. That was not the first crop that made people go, we need slave labor. It was actually sugar canes. Yeah, because on those islands, sugar cane grew faster, larger, and it tasted better than it did from Europe. Can sugar cane grow in Europe? Yes. Is it going to grow as big? No. Is it going to grow really large? No. Is it going to taste good? Heck no. But the thing is, on those Caribbean islands, those um, those sugar canes tasted better, grew faster, and were larger. Plantations were set up in Brazil. They were set up, again, on Puerto Rico, Jamaica, Haiti, um, Costa Rica, uh, Cuba, they set a, pl set a plantations to grow sugar canes. Now, I'm sure you're thinking, well, I don't know if you've ever seen a sugar cane, but they can grow pretty big. The shortest in those islands that they can get is four feet tall. That's the shortest. The tallest is 12 feet high. So they can get pretty big. And this is the beginning part of the slave trade, when it really starts to kick into gear. Okay, well, we're going to be finishing off the, the second half of it next week. So here is your next question, okay? Why do you think the demand for slaves was primarily aimed at Africa? Why didn't they go after Australia? Australia is an island. They could have easily surrounded it and attacked it and captured those people and made them slaves. Why not? There's a bunch of islands in Asia. Why didn't they take those people from those islands, make them slaves? You know, why was it focused on Africa? Why do you think? All right. So 
write your response. Tell me what you think. Again, this is what you think. All right. Just want to know. Um, so write your response, but we're moving on in three, two, one. All right. So the, here's your exit ticket question. You can pick one or the bottom question, whichever one you feel you can answer better. The first one says, do you think that people inside a country should buy stuff only made from their country? So in other words, should people from the U.S. buy only things made in the U.S.? Yes or no and why? Okay. The next question says, do you think if a colony didn't have raw material, if they didn't have any gold, sil silver, lumber, coal, fresh water, new foods, do you think that country would still want their people to live there? If they got nothing out of it, what do you think? Yes, no, or why? Okay. So once you've picked one of those uh, questions to answer and you're finished, you are done with this lesson. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. All right. I will see you guys later. Okay.